Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna review a product that I've had for a while in my studio. I've dabbled with it a bit, but I just really buckled down today and I uh, did a few drawings with this just to kind of get a handle on this and um, get my information together so I could do a review. And this is the Parku Dual Tip Art Marker Set of 80. Um, so I review a lot of art markers here. Um, a lot of times they're very similar. That's gonna be the case today, but there are some things that make this set a little bit different. For one, the case, and I have seen other marker brands coming out with cases like this. The case is a clear hard plastic. Um, it's nice to have clear cases if you like to see your supplies when they're sitting on a shelf. Not everybody does. Some people would prefer a black uh, cloth case or they would prefer a um, like a marker rack that just sits up on their table. I do think that you could pop this uh, this plastic lid off right there and set this on its side. The markers come with a swatch that you color in yourself so you have a good record of your colors and inside here there is a grid that um, keeps all the markers divided and in order. The nice thing about that is if you want to group your colors together with colors they blend well with you could do that so it just makes it easier for you to reference. Now um, I'm gonna dump these out so you can see what the grid looks like. I kind of hesitated to do this, but I'm like, you know, um, you know, let me grab a box first <laughs> before I do this because I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pick up markers if I don't. Um, let me just flip this over a box. <laughs> okay, and I just wanted to show you the grid inside here because you might want to use this to fashion your own marker rack. So it's got this nice little, um, it's kind of not really a honeycomb, it's just a, a square grid that holds all 80 markers. And I was thinking that if you um, like saved some cardboard boxes or maybe built something out of wood or foam core and kind of put this in the center, you could really make a really nice um, like desk standalone marker rack. So if you didn't want to use this case, I thought that was kind of a neat thing. So I wanted to pull that out and show you. It does not have a bottom, so you would uh, you could have that like in the middle of a box, so if you had a box, right, and um, you could put this like halfway through like that so it, your markers wouldn't fall out and uh, keep them all organized that way and they wouldn't fall through the back, um, you know, because you could have it close enough to the back so that they won't be able to tip and fall through. I think that would be really handy. Um, so anyways, I thought that was kind of different and unique and um, you might find it interesting. So let's look at the color selection. I probably should have done that last in case I wanted to do, well, I do want to do a blending test. Now I've dumped all my markers into a box and I'll, <laughs> I'll have to look at my swatch. That's all right. Um, well, let me grab the markers back up here in the random box that they don't belong in. And um, let's take a look. So this is the selection of colors. I did compare it to some other uh, sets of 80 markers that I have, and you'll notice that you'll see some similar colors, especially because this uh, set of markers goes on the same set, the same color way, or these the same color numbers and inks as the art marker, Jerry's Artorama concept markers, Touch New, the classic Ohuhu's, you know, with the bullet and the uh, chisel nib, uh, the park, oh, well, these other parking marker, markers, the Artix markers, the Coleco markers, and the Art and Fly brush markers. So they use Use those same type of inks and I'm sure there's a bunch of other generic markers on Amazon that use that same color system but the nice thing about that is that if you loved a marker and you just wanted to refill it you could go to Art and Fly or you could go to Shinhan and you could order a bottle of that color number 29 number 97 and you could refill that marker so I like that these do not have to be a disposable marker if you don't want them to be so the first thing I want to do is compare them to a couple markers that I thought they looked very similar to and that would be the um, the Azure marker by Royal and Langnickel, the Arteza Everblend marker, and let's just grab one of these guys here. So I'm hoping this isn't casting a really bad shadow. I feel like my desk is so cluttered right now. Uh, so let's take a look at these. I'm just going to get to a fresh page here so I can compare. I think I'll zoom in a little bit too so you can see a little bit more. And we're going to uncap these bad boys. Now this is the Parku. That's what we're talking about today. Um, you've got names and numbers on the caps. I know some people are funny and they want to have their names on the caps. Oh, that doesn't want to focus because there's too much, too much white stuff here. Um, maybe if I move that over and it can see the black. Um, and there is no color name on the barrel, so uh, you'll want to keep that in mind. The caps do peg together, not super tight, but. They are all right, and there are little grippies on the end of the caps to help you remove them if you have any uh, strength issues. Let me recap and just, I mean, 
I, I, they're capped on there tightly. I don't think they're too difficult to remove. Now the Azure markers also have a bullet tip and a brush tip and they have your names and numbers on there. They don't use the same numbering um, uh, configuration, but very similar body feel. They're a rounded triangle. And the Arteza Everblend markers are also very similar in, in feel. Um, and none of these markers actually have the name of the color on the barrel. Uh, so just, uh, that's the Arteza, broad, fine. This is the Azure, which is a little harder to find. A little bit thicker of a broad nib or the ink bleeds a little bit more maybe. And then the Parku, whoops, I didn't have that flush. Nice fine tip, nice broad tip. And um, so very similar um, in feel. If you have ever blends, you like the way they feel, the, um, the Parku are gonna feel very similar. Now price, the Parkus is among the cheapest marker. It is 40 cents a marker right now, according to the latest info I found on Amazon where they are $32.99 per set of 80, and then there's like a $2 off coupon. So around 40 cents a marker. I find that a lot of the brush and I'm sorry, the chisel bullet markers go for around 50 cents, 50 cents to a dollar a marker. And I don't see a heck of a lot of difference between these different brands. So I'm gonna set these two aside. Um, very, very similar in performance and feel and everything. And um, let's let's look at the color selection again though. Well, here's my swatch and here is a little demonstration, a little blending demonstration I did on some marker paper. So marker paper is not the, you know, the best for blending. Um, you can definitely blend on it, but it is, uh, it's definitely more for, you know, conserving your ink and layering. Your thicker papers and cardstocks are better for blending. I'm going to zoom on just a smidgen more. Um, so I wanted to see what sort of colors I could get from the range here, what sort of blends that I could get. The first thing I did uh, was actually this yellow blend. I really like that. And actually I was just kind of doing a, a blend. I wasn't drawing anything and then I decided to make it into a feather and then I decided to feather swatch everything. The thing that I like, there's a lot of really nice pastel colors. These um, into the hundred numbers, you get these nice pale shades and they have quite a few of those. Um, so you can blend by value. That's when you pick a bunch of different colors and you just go by their values and you can pull them together really easily. And then you've got a lot of color families you can blend together, like these turquoises. You've got a couple of the more um, uh, violet-based blues that are harder to blend. You've got a few, quite a few in the purple-pink ranges that you can blend together. You've got lots of your teals, lots of greens, quite a few yellows. Um, really nice varieties for like a really pale skin, a medium skin, and a dark skin. Um, and then, of course, you could use those really pale violets, the really pale pinks um, to shadow the, uh, the pale skins. You could use your deeper browns, you could use your warm grays, you could use oranges, you could use blues to uh, shadow under the darker skins. And uh, I think you have a really nice variety of colors here. There is a lot in the green family, but Green, the greens are pretty complex. You have more of your teals, and then you've got more of your yellow greens, you've got more of the, kind of like your olives, and you've got the kind of true greens. So that doesn't bother me. Um, the gray selections, you've got some warm gray, you've got some cool gray, you've got blue gray, and then you get a couple green gray. To be honest, I would rather if they had gotten rid of the blue gray and green gray and just given me a couple more warm grays and cool grays, that would have been a much more useful combination for me. And one thing that's kind of strange about the set is you get a metallic gold and silver, which I've never seen in alcohol markers before, but I thought that might be kind of nice for like, um, like I've got a watercolor tin here and I think it would be kind of cool to label my, um, label my tin. I could just wipe this off with alcohol if I didn't, uh, if I didn't like it. Now, one thing I noticed though, was I think it was on the silver. Yeah, the, the fine tip does not work very well but the broad tip does, and you can turn, or geez, I cannot write and talk at the same time. So it does write pretty opaquely on the gold. I didn't have a problem with the fine tip. And I'll just show you the broad tip with the gold just to just to show you that. Um, I was kind of, that's kind of neat. That might be kind of fun if you're doing um, like some holiday cards or whatnot. Uh, but you know, there it is. I've never seen that before in a alcohol marker. I've seen like the stinky, uh, I don't know if it's xylene based or what it is, solvent based markers that like the, 
oh, you know, like the gold leaf pens and stuff that are really strong smelling. These do not have that, that strong, that, these barely have any odor. It almost doesn't even smell like alcohol. I kind of wonder if these are water-based. Hmm. Gee, I kind of wonder if these metallic ones might be water-based because they are not, they have absolutely no alcohol odor. I wouldn't be surprised if these are water-based. Hmm. That's interesting. They might just be like a water-based paint pen. Interesting. It's because you have a very faint smell of, uh, of alcohol with uh, with these, but very similar to like what a Copic marker is. I'm a very bad judge at how strong a marker smells because I'm not bothered by alcohol markers. People who are would be a better uh, judgment. So I thought it'd be fun to do like a little ombre blend here. So I have my, uh, I have cardstock here. So I showed you the uh, the feathers, I'll show you one more time. I'll show you the feathers I did here on the marker paper. This is Arteza marker paper. I, that's another thing I have to review coming up. Um, so these were just some sketches, some doodles, and some blends on the marker paper. So I thought to do a blending test, it would be better to do it on a cardstock so that, um, uh, so that you know, it's going to stay wetter longer and it will... Um, It'll be a little bit better for that. I'm going to put something down so I don't bleed through to my, my cutting mat, although it's black, so uh, it's not that big of a deal. So what I'm going to do is look at different colors. I could blend by color grouping, or I could do kind of an ombre blend, and I really like the ombre blend idea. So I think, uh, boy, I wish I didn't dump out all my markers, but I think I'm going to do um, kind of like a, a pastel ombre blend. So let's see, 138, I really should have done this before I dumped them all out. Uh, let's see, 75, that's a really pretty pale purple. Let's do a really pale blue, 182. And I do like the, the variety of pastels in the set. You generally don't get a lot of pastels. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Mm. Oh, but by the way, the caps are not great matches for the color of the ink, so you do have to bear that in mind as you're picking colors. They're, they're, the pastels are all right for color matches, but the other ones really are not wonderful color matches. And let's see. Oh, I should probably go into a yellow. Let's do 49. Um, 49, do I want 135? Four. Oh, that's more of a peach. Let's do 49. And let's do, let's find a really pale green. Actually, I think that's called pale green. I wonder if 174 would be, would be light enough to transition into. We'll try it. We'll try that. What do you say? 174. That should be pretty light because it's in the higher colors. Those are pretty. Now, I think I want to pick a darker color of each of one of these because um, I might want to do like a, I'm going to do a feather, so I might want to have the darker color on the inside. So let me look here and pick out um, like a darker color to choose here. I don't want that fluorescent, I don't think, for that. Um, well, maybe I do. Uh, I think I'll do 33. And that will be my companion. I'm just going to line them up. Could line them up right here actually that makes sense that way you can see the ends of them 33 and then for the 174 let's do like 59 or 46 let's try 59 i can always grab uh 46 if i want to afterwards and it is a good idea if you're going to do a blend to have everything out and ready to go um before you do i'll do 66 for that one uh, before you start so that you don't have to like kind of stop and think when you're blending and then we got 75, let's do 83. That's a really pretty color. And I love that they give you a swatch that you can color. 138, let's do, ooh, is 88? 88 is pretty, pretty dark. Um, maybe I'll do 147. 138, yeah, I think I might do 147 because that one's at least a little bit closer and then for 28, I think I'll do 18. Boy, these colors just make me happy though, looking at them, aren't they pretty? There, I'll have them right there so you can see them too. All right, so I think I will draw a feather and um, I'm just I'm gonna draw them with a, with a pen. I'll just use a fine liner. And let's see, I wanna make a nice pretty feather. Let's start here. Maybe I'll go kind of diagonally. I gotta make sure I keep it on screen. I hope this thing stays in focus because it's kind of it's kind of zoomed in tight. Um, uh, 
Okay, and let's see, let's give it give its quill there. Give it some little some little fuzzies. I don't want it too complicated because I'm gonna have to get around all those little nooks and crannies as we go. But at least on a small piece of paper I can turn it around if I need to. Which is an issue I was having with the uh, big piece of paper. So there we have a feather. Um, it's a Polaroid. I'm shaking it. I'm actually just gonna set it on my little heat source here. I don't have my heat tool plugged in. Hopefully that's that's dry enough. You know what? No, I am going to I'm gonna dry it because you know what? Let's not tempt fate, shall we? Let's just not. <laughs> so you want to make sure your fine liner is dry. That's a, a just a micron. It's a biennial micron, which is cheaper than the um, the Sakura microns. But any of those should work just fine with your alcohol markers. And I like them. The microns they work with your watercolors as well. All right. So we're gonna just start by blending. And um, I think I'm gonna start. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. I'll start here, just gonna make sure I, I leave enough space as I go. And we've got number 49, which actually, boy, it looks darker on this than it did on my, um, on my paper, on my marker paper, I think. And the reason cardstock is a little bit better for blending is because it's thicker. And so, it can hold more ink. So it does it does use your ink up faster. So keep that in mind. Now I'm going to do the green and I'm probably going to blend back in to the um, the yellow after I get the green section done. I like to use the broad tip or the chisel tip whenever I don't have a brush tip marker those chisel tips get most of the action I'm really gonna saturate that paper now I'm gonna go back to my yellow I'm actually gonna go with the broad tip and I'm gonna color where they mat where they meet up hello friend shall we blend yes we shall because we are Gonna get along with Lindsay today. Now we're gonna go with our light blue. Again, I'm gonna go in with a broad tip. Ooh, that's a pretty color. Trying to just kind of mentally divide it up as I work. Gosh, I hope you guys don't find this boring. I don't, I can't talk and like, I can't talk and color at the same time, you crazy? I can kind of talk and color at the same time, but. Really saturate that puppy. I'm very excited at, at the options that there are out there for markers because when I started, um, I got Prismacolors. Copics were just way too pricey and um, I went with Prismacolors and I bought them on sale from Dick Blick and I paid I think about uh, $2 per marker which was a great deal considering their list price was like about 4 or 5 4 or 5 whoops. That's blend this together with the blue now, blend the edges. Um, and I really like them, I still like them, I still have them in my stash, they, they held up really well. Of course I have a lot of markers so none of them get used, Ton, you know there's not one single marker that's used a ton, I have a few uh, really pale Copics that I refill a lot, but well, not even a lot, I refill I should say. Um, but, uh, gosh, where was I going? That one looks darker than it did in the swatch. Is that 75? Yeah, wow. Yeah, it does look darker on this paper. Good, it's a good idea to swatch your markers on the paper you typically use as well. So not just the swatch that comes with your, with your set, because if you're used to using a particular paper, you'll want to know how that's going to behave. We'll saturate it. We're going to go in back in with the blue. And doing a rainbow blend is a little more difficult than doing a one tone, like just doing dark to light of something. So this will give you a good idea of how they honestly blend. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. Okay, now we're going to go to pink. Okay. 
And then we'll go to peach. I don't think I need to blend back the purple back into that. Don't be afraid of those broad tips, guys. Use the broad tip markers. Okay. Now we can go in with our darker tones and we can add some shading towards the middle. So I'm going in here with this yellow. I'm gonna blend out with a pale yellow. I'd probably use the fine tip for that. Now that we're, oh, when you're just doing the edges there. The fine tip is fine to use. We'll go into the green. Let's see how this one goes. This one might be a lot darker. Oh, not too bad. That one might be a little tricky to transition. Although I might bring that right down to the stem or the quill rather, because I feel like I should have that a little bit darker. And my, because it's cardstock, it doesn't dry up as fast as marker paper because it holds a lot more ink. Now I'm going to take my green and kind of blend it out, blend out the edge. Maybe even actually pull out some little, little shape, kind of get some of those lines that you would have from the barbs of the feather. I really hope my camera doesn't. I really hope my camera doesn't like uh, decide to run out of battery while I'm doing this. That would be such a bummer. All right, now let's go back in with a darker yellow and just add a little bit of that in there as well. Kind of feather them in. Feather the feather. Paper makes such a big difference, guys. If you are having a hard time blending, make sure you're using a paper that's designed for blending. Oops, I want the fine tip, I think, for... And so a little bit of dark, I'm going to bring it back in the quill a little bit because I like that definition and that depth in the quill. I kind of overlap the, the center color up into the color ahead and behind it, behind it, and you can turn this and make it more comfortable. The blue is the strongest, I think I've got a darker value of the blue than the other colors. I'm going to go in with the paler blue now. I can go back into the green a little bit too and get it to get it to merge a little bit more. I feel like I could even add a little bit more of that darker blue in there, honestly. I think I do want a little bit more of the darker blue. Maybe I'll go in with the broad tip. Are we still in frame? Gosh, I hope that's focusing. I cannot tell because it's such pale colors. I'll bring that up into the purple a little bit too. Oh, I like that. I like that blue, that's pretty. Blues are tricky to blend, purples are tricky to blend, reds are tricky to blend. I don't know, those three, man. Those are the tough ones. Darker purple. Hopefully, this one's not too bad. Oh, it's pretty dark though. 83. Yeah, that is. Uh, that's a little on the dark side, but but we can do it. You can do it. Add a little bit of that. Te you know the texture of the feather. Oops, went outside the lines a little bit. That's all right. That's the worst thing that happens to you today. That's not a big deal. And we'll blend it with the broad tip of the lighter color. Just because the broad tips lay down more ink and will help us blend a little bit better. This would be really pretty on a card. I might just save this. I might just use it as a postcard because it you know, wouldn't even bleed if it went through the rain. Except I'm going outside the lines. Oh, there's no colorless blender with this set. That's something I wanted to mention. Blending it back into the blue. I know you're probably thinking, what a pain, Lindsay. It's not a pain, it's fun. 
just be careful you don't oversaturate or you're gonna have to, you know, you're gonna go outside of your lines. You could use a thicker dark marker if you did that, but you probably don't wanna do that. Uh, this is the next color I chose, which is another type of purple tone, which means I can actually go further back into that previous purple one and get it to bend to my will a little bit more. Sorry about the background noises. <laughs> You're probably used to it by now. Get the water pump going. Oh, I like that color. This is 147. That's a pretty color. It's kind of like a Pepto-Bismol pink color. I barely feel like I need to blend it, but I'm going to because teaching you the right the right way, right? I think I am. I mean, I don't know. It's a pretty new... Marker art is a pretty new thing. I don't know if there's a right way or wrong way. There's the way that gets you the results that you want. And blend that back. All right, now let's take a look at that. I feel like my blend could be a little bit better in here. And this, so I'm going with a darker pink and just adding. I probably shouldn't have done that detailing with the, that purple because purple is such a tricky color. I'm trying not to go right out to the lines because if I do, it's a good chance it's going to want to um, want to feather back on me. That would be a dark one. Yes, that's a darker one, isn't it? That's the darker of the pinks. What did I just have? I must have the lighter of the pinks or something. I don't know. I've got chaos because I've lost my color order because I've been just flinging markers like a crazy person. Let's go right over this middle part too. And now we're going to go in with our blue. Why do I keep using the fine tip? Bullet tip woman! This is no time for a fine tip marker. Although I do need the fine tip of this blue one, I think, because I'm blending. I'm blending, I'm flicking. Now, so like you could, if you had a brush tip, it'd be very easy to vary your, your ink from more to less and have more color in the center with just the flick of, a, of, a, of your hand with a little practice, I should say, because I don't want anyone to think that brush tips are magic or anything. But um, it is a lot easier with a brush tip. And when you have a brush bullet combo, you pretty much just use the brush because it does everything. Um, so it's less capping, recapping, getting the right end. But they're a lot more money. They're double the price at least. Ooh, I like blending this light, light blue back. That's satisfying. And then I think I'll just go into the darker yellow real quick. Is that darn... Ah, my camera shut off, but luckily my battery wasn't dead and I still have room on the camera card, so we're all right. And uh, there we have, I think that's, that looks pretty good. It's not dry yet. When it dries, we'll get the, we'll get the full effect. But while we're waiting for that to dry, um, let's just, uh, let's just look over the colors again. Um, I think this is a, it's a really nice selection of colors. Um, it doesn't look that earth shattering compared to a lot of other marker sets. It is a little bit cheaper than Ohuhu. It, uh, it's cheaper than Artix. Um, there are some brands on Amazon that are cheaper than this that I haven't used. Um, they're probably very similar, but I do have to say that this is one of the nicest beginner, um, beginner selection of colors that I've seen. The gold and silver are strange. I think they're water-based markers and I think they're just kind of nice for probably little highlights on greeting cards or, um, or things like that, maybe for if you're doing some holiday crafting or whatnot. Um, no colorless blender, so if you already have a colorless blender, that's great. I'd rather have a color than to have a clear blender. Or you can pick one up at an art, art supply store for a couple dollars. If you get like a Prismacolor or a Promarker, they're, I, with a coupon, you know, you can get them for a few bucks. Uh, they usually come with different sets. You can also buy them on Amazon in like three packs and stuff. I usually just use the ones that come in my sets and I haven't had a problem. Um, but I'm sure buying them individually would be fine too. I have bought the Prismacolors on their own, but that's the only, those are the only open stock ones that I bought. I'm still letting that dry. Um, let's see. The only complaint I have would be, again, I wish they didn't put the blue grays and the green grays in there. I wish they had just more warm and cool grays, just because you can underpaint anything with a good set of grays. 
and you need but you need those grays really to have similar undertones you could use the blue grays with the cool grays but you get a blue a blue gray one and a cool gray one so it doesn't really help you out and blue grays are harder to blend than the cool grays so um, like if I had to offer some advice to Parku, that's what I would say. Love the selection of pastels and skin tones in this set. I think that it was really well thought out and I think this would be a really nice set for a beginner to start with as long as you don't mind the fact that they are, that they are a bullet and chisel tip um, combination. I know that's a little bit, that's not what a lot of people want. A lot of people want the brush tips. Brush tips are easier. Um, I had a viewer, Dean, said that he that that using a chisel tip marker is like driving a standard, and using a brush tip marker is like driving an automatic. And that was like the best analogy I ever heard for like bullet tip versus a chisel tip markers, um, or a bullet chisel versus brush markers. And that's very true. But it does, but you can get the same effects. You just got to put a little more work into it. it. Takes a little bit longer to color in a lot of effect in a lot of. Um, instances but you can get a lot more for your money with a bullet and chisel tip marker so um, this isn't completely dry I'm just gonna blast it with a heat tool really quickly to um, you know dry that ink up the back of your paper if you're doing blending it should look like this oh something fun that I do sometimes if I'm working in a sketchbook and I've got a sketch like this what I'll do and um, well, I can show you I will take my uh, my fine liner and I will just like I could even do it with this brush one I will just go on the next page on the back side of my of my um, my sketchbook and I will just you know like um, kind of get two sketches for one and on the back side I'll do this because otherwise you're you're like you're I would take more time but um, so that's the reverse side isn't that fun so you can do that with alcohol markers in your sketchbook and I think that's kind of a fun way to get two drawings for the price of one and just kind of help you know, break out of any art block or whatnot, but they blend really well. Um, they worked really well on marker paper, worked really well on cardstock. Um, those are pretty much the two surfaces I use for alcohol markers. Um, none of them felt dry. Usually your lighter colors will feel a little more draggy or dry. I think it's because they have a higher alcohol content to pigment, but overall I think these are a really nice, um, nice marker. I think it's a nice starter set for anyone. If you have a good collection of markers for these are probably going to be very duplicate for you. So if you have like the 120 set of Arteza or you have the full set of Artix markers, I think you're going to find that you've got a lot of overlap, if not every single color in those other sets, and they only come in 80 colors. So maybe they're going to expand into larger sets. I know last year Parku had a set of markers, it was I think 36, and they were kind of like Sharpie type office markers. Um, and I think those got kind of popular, so then they kind of branched out into more of the dual tip art marker range and who knows maybe they're going to go with a bigger set next time. I think this is a really encouraging um, set and I wouldn't hesitate to buy it for a new marker artist because of the wonderful assortment of earth tones it can be used for skin tones and pale tones that the set contains. Uh, my complaints are very are very small with this and uh, another thing that's really interesting since these are so similar to the Arteza markers Let's just have a look again here. Uh, since they're so similar to the Arteza markers, Arteza actually sells um, extra nibs and extra bullet and uh, fine nibs. That one's starting to come out. I'm not going to pull them out. And those would, I am like sure, pretty sure would would um, correspond to the nibs in the parkour markers. So, you know, if you did damage a nib, I don't think you're going to wear them out. I've never worn out a bullet chisel nib, but if you damaged a nib, then... Um, then you could definitely find a replacement so that you could keep using that marker, which I like. So it is something you could make into a permanent set if you wanted to. There's my, uh, there's my take on the Parku dual tip art markers. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm very pleased with these. And I mean, I was kind of like, oh, when, when they contacted me to ask if I'd like to review their markers, I was kind of like, oh, another set of markers. I don't know if I have the strength in me. I've reviewed so many and so many are similar. And yes, these are similar to a lot of other brands, but I have to say this color selection is really nice. And a lot of times the color selection, like you've got too many colors that are too similar. I don't see anywhere here where I've got two colors that are too similar. The 28 and 29 look kind of similar in the swatch, but they're, they're not. The 28, 29, and 34 actually do a nice, uh, really nice fair blend. I did use, I think I used a little 97 in there too, but it was those three colors. Uh, so they were different enough to get those three, uh, those three tones there. Uh, I really don't see, I mean, there is a lot of the tealy green colors, but 
if you're doing landscapes, I really don't think that would be that big of a deal. And blues are kind of hard to blend, so having a few more shades on them is not a bad is not a bad thing. Um, yeah, I I really happy with these. I just don't like the blue grays and green grays. I'd rather have more warms and cools, but that's my only qualm with this set. So I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. And until next time, happy crafting.